Hi, and welcome to Photo News TV. I'm your host, Will Prattis, and today we've got some beautiful flowers, Tamron 90 millimeter macro lens, and a couple of different macro lights. So we're comparing this LED, which I just picked up at one of the local retailers, to the METS 15 MS1. So this is an LED light, this is an actual flash with a couple of flash tubes in it. So we're going to take a look at the two because I get asked quite often what's better for my work, LED or flash. Now, shooting this video I'm using a couple of Aurora LEDs and that's really where LED shines is shooting video. So how is it for macro work? So we're going to take a look at the different settings between using the LED and the macro flash and see what gives us the best overall image quality as well as the most flexibility. So let's jump right into it. So let's start off with the LED light. How they attach to your lens, it's got a, a nylon or a plastic ring that threads onto the front of your lens. These are available, they usually come in the box with sizes for most popular lenses up to usually 72 millimeter because that's about the size of the opening on this. Anything larger than 72, you're going to get a lot of vignetting. There's two buttons on the side of the unit. That pops on, your light is secure. I'm gonna run this backwards for now, just to show you the controls here. On this unit, you've got a power dial, and most of them are the same that you buy online. This one I happen to pick up at a local retailer, but uh, there's out these kind of LED lights are available pretty much everywhere. So you've got quarter power, you've got half power, and you've got full power, and anywhere in between. It's a stepless setting. That's all there is to really controlling most of these LED lights, and you'll notice you can see all the little LED emitters. So if you're photographing something reflective, you might even see those in, in your catch lights. Now this particular unit also allows you to change your lighting from left to right. My left, not yours. Uh, also, because it's only half of the emitter, now you've got a bit of flexibility by rotating around the front. You'll notice that the cord kind of catches, so it doesn't always stay where you want. Let's go back to full. And this particular unit also happens to have a flash mode. This is uh, camera system specific and I'm going to have to turn this around because you'll notice that I've got Nikon contacts on here. So let's spin that around and in flash mode, so pressing the flash button gives you an idea just that little extra juice it gives so when I hit the shutter and you'll notice it pulses a bit more. So it kind of looks like a flash but just because it looks like a flash doesn't really mean it is a flash. If we compare the camera settings from the images taken with this to the images taken with the METS macro flash, you'll start to see a difference. And power is certainly the biggest place. These are great for video, as you can see here. But let's really take a look at what happens when we put the METS on here. Now, I was really hoping that when I put the METS on, the rings look very similar. I was hoping I could use the same ring, but there's a difference in the size of the ring, so they aren't interchangeable. And look how quickly that nylon plastic ring popped off. I didn't even unthread it, and it was threaded on there. Uh, one of the nice things with the METS is it's a metal ring. So when we put that metal ring on here, it threads on nice and securely. And let's just pull it. Yep, we're good. Similar concept for attaching with the buttons on the side. So let's put that on there. Power switch is on the back, and the last step is to raise your pop-up flash. The METS 15 MS1 works with most camera systems out on the market. It's set up for Canon, Nikon, Olympus, Samsung Pentax, sorry, not Samsung phones, but Samsung cameras, um, and Sony. And I really hope that METS Germany decides to create a Fujifilm uh, firmware as well. There is a USB port just on the inside where you can plug in a cord and do firmware updates. We're up to version 5 now. 
and this is a true flash. So let's take a look at some of the details and features on the METS 15. It has a diffuser on the front, which you can rotate and adjust, and you can also pop the diffuser off. So now it's a little more contrasty light, about a third of a stop more light without the diffuser attached. What I like about the diffuser as well is it just it's a simple pop on there and you can use this part of it is just like the wide angle diffuser on your regular speed light so it just spreads the light a little bit more and I find it does give me a softer overall effect still not the same as a softbox but it still works very very well. Now with the METS 15, because it's a true flash, it actually has two flash tubes in here. METS 15 means it has a guide number of 15. You shouldn't be using this at 15 feet even. Um, it's really meant for things like flowers and bugs and, and all the cool little things you find around your house that you want to shoot with your new macro lens and macro flash. So bear that in mind. Everything's meant for close-up work. Now, the two flash tubes are mounted in here. You can rotate them around, just like the other unit. Now you'll notice this one tends to stay in place a little bit better. Another difference with the METS is you can actually create lighting ratios by adjusting the amount of light side to side, just by pressing a button on the top. Another nice feature for focusing up close, there is an actual modeling light or AF assist light. That's just, there's an AF button on the back, press that little bit of a modeling light helps you focus because your AF assist beam on your camera back here is going to be blocked by both your lens and the unit so that gives you the ability to focus. Now for those cameras that don't have TTL commander mode built in you can add an external flash with master slave mode like my METS 52M AF1 or there is a PC sync port on the side so you can hook it up if your camera's got a PC sync terminal. And it's as easy as that. Once it's in TTL, the camera looks after all the settings. So let's quickly review those camera settings. So we we'll press menu. Remember, Nikon menus go down this way and then across. Canon menus go across here and then down. It's not rocket science, it's just backwards because Canon and Nikon like to be backwards. So we press menu. On Nikon's, it's custom shooting menu, the pencil. Come down to bracketing and flash. Flash control for built-in flash. So on Canon's, it's usually the first or second menu option across the top. And it's external flash control. Whoops, let's go back in here. And our options are TTL manual, and we're going to skip down to commander mode because that's what controls your pop-up flash. And in here, if I don't want my built-in flash to affect the image, then I'm going to turn it off because by default it's usually in TTL. I turn that one off. Group A, so I can use my METS 15 as a full TTL flash, so I don't have to think about settings. Now if I want to, I can come down to manual if I'm looking for repeatability. I can set the flash into manual and adjust the power anywhere from 1 1 28th up to full power. And that way every shot that I take is going to have the same light, the same exposure as long as I don't change anything else. So if you're trying to do 30 images of the same flower to keep things consistent, use manual. Whoops. Let's go back in here. i got to adjust that timeout later. So I'm going to leave it in TTL. Group B I'm not using, so it doesn't really matter what that is. If I'm using a fill flash like I did in the Photo News magazine, I had Group B set to TTL with a positive um, exposure adjustment because I needed to get um, just a little bit more light on the background. And that's all there is to setting up your camera. Once you're done, your pop-up flash will trigger the METS 15. And that's it, Bob's your uncle. So let's take a look at the difference in settings. So white balance has been put on flash because hopefully we're working with flash. And you'll notice that the color is certainly a lot cleaner on the images coming from the METS flash. You're getting 
low ISO for nice clean images. I shot with my D810, so I'm at ISO 64. Now here's another little test that I did to show off the capabilities of both lights. So I did a comparison where everything's at the same distance. I focused on the anther of the flower and I went through apertures. So I'm at ISO 64, f3.8, 1 250th of a second. So all I did was adjust aperture and let the flash control everything else. The LED light, and the first thing I notice to get the same amount of light, same exposure as the Met's flash, my ISO is up at 640. So 1 250th of a second, f3.8, ISO 640 instead of 64. So that's a huge difference in exposure value. Uh, and as we keep going up in aperture, so you can see the difference with the METS flash. It darkens it up a little bit as I drop to F8, and our depth of field certainly increases. So at F8, we're at ISO 3600. Now at first blush, it looks like a pretty solid image, and that's a, an advantage of my 810. As we come to F16, we've got most of the flowers in focus. There's really nice depth of field here on the first three flowers. Uh, lots of, of focus. If we zoom in, the, the sharpness is getting a little ridiculous. But that Tamron 90 lens is a spectacular macro lens. We come down to F16 and we're at ISO 12.8, which is starting to get in dangerous territory for noise. And what I found was, even with the METs, F45 is a, a ridiculously tiny aperture. Uh, so the image is pretty dark, so when I bumped the ISO, I was able to get similar exposure. Uh, you'll, it's still a little bit dark. Uh, once we get down to F45, my auto ISO was set at 12.8 for ISO, so the image is pretty dark. I wound up having to go down to 1 30th of a second from 1 250th at F45 and ISO 10,000 to get a similar exposure. And the details there, but you can start to see the noise coming in. It's nowhere near as clean as what the image at 640 is, let alone ISO 64. All right, so I hope you found this informative. I think we've discovered that for the most part, for the best image quality, uh, a flash like the METS 15 is going to give you far superior results, uh, much lower noise. The flip side to all of that is you could shoot with longer uh, shutter times with the LED light to get to keep your ISO down. If you remember your exposure triangle with ISO uh, shutter speed and aperture, keeping everything in relation, but a longer shutter speed could be tricky if you have a bit of wind blowing and your flowers are moving, a long shutter speed's not going to work. So you've got to raise your ISO to keep shutter speeds fast enough to freeze things. One of the other things that I notice with the LED, and this comes up a lot at events, is when this is turned on and somebody points this at you, you know, you're looking away from it. If this is directional on your lens, well, let me turn that off, not only are people going to look away, but insects always fly away when you come at them with an LED light because they can see it coming. Whereas at least with a flash, you're a lot more stealthy and able to sneak up on things. Where the LED is really handy is shooting video. And that's where LED shines. They're really great for video work. And that's about the only place that I would recommend using them. Um, it's just, they're not meant for great photos. Uh, hopefully the tech comes there though. As we know, technology changes exponentially. It's not there yet. I'm sure it will be someday, but right now a xenon flash tube is king when it comes to still images. LEDs are still king for video. So we've established the strengths and weaknesses of both. You can find either of these units at your local retailer. Uh, you can also get the METS flash. If you go to metsflash.ca, you can find it there. There's also a link in the comments down below, a direct link. Um, to the store where you can order these. But if you pop into your favorite retailer and ask for it, they should be able to order it in for you. So I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope I've inspired you to get out there and light your images in a different way. If you've got 
some suggestions on future videos, don't forget to leave them down below. Any comments on this, feel free to leave them. Don't forget to click the like button and show us a little bit of love. And while you're at it, click on the link that's floating around here. Uh, subscribe to Photo News Magazine. The spring 2018 issue is full of macro images, uh, macro articles, how-tos, a lot of images taken with the Mets ring flash, and also the Vanguard Ultra Pro 2 Plus tripod. Uh, we're going to do a separate video on this later on. I love this for macro work because it's so flexible, but we'll cover that down the road. Hope you have a great day. Happy shooting.